This is the Big Head Bookworm channel. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good day. Now, normally I say hello to BookTube because I record BookTube videos. So it's book, uh, videos that I record about my reading and what I've been reading, what books I've had in recently. Um, recently, I've been taking part in March Mystery Madness. Um, so if you're a new vi viewer because of that, hello, lovely to see you. However, this isn't a bookish video. No, this is about one of my other passions. So as you know, if you watch any of my book videos, you know I'm incredibly passionate about books. Um, I am also incredibly passionate about all things yarn related um, and craft relating. I was, a uh, quick history, I was um, a quilter for many, many years. I absolutely loved quilting. I did quilting uh, courses and qualifications, um, thoroughly enjoy it and machining and, and and sewing and all that kind of thing, mainly hand sewing, but I'm also quite a comfortable machinist. Um, and then in the last kind of four or five years, I have gotten back into um, yarn, in particularly crochet and knitting. So that's what it, that's what we're here to talk about today. It is my number five yarn chat. I know. I feel like if I'm going to be completely honest, like I have been talking to you about yarn for months and months and months, and we've done so many yarn chats. And I think that's because I watch a lot of them. But also in my head, I'm thinking about talking to you about yarn and what I've been looking at and reading and watching. And I just feel like we are always talking about yarn. But in fact, when I come and look at it, no, I've, I'm, I'm barely there. I'm only in number five. So hello. So if you've watched my previous yarn chat videos, you'll know that I will um, witter on for, <laughs> for about 40, 50 minutes and um, then we can chat in the comments below. I don't do a Ravelry group. Watching other people's um, knitting um, videos, knitting and crochet podcasts, quite often they talk about their Ravelry group or um, I'm not, I'm just not there yet. Whether or not it will come, I don't know, but it does seem to me like quite a lot of work and I don't feel like I'm experienced enough. I'm not I mean, I'm just kind of dipping my toe into Ravelry. I like looking at the patterns and I kind of read some of the other groups, but I'm not, you know, there are some people that are kind of really into the chat and everything. And I'm, I'm just not, I'm a bit nervous about it, I guess. I think it's kind of a rabbit hole I just get lost into. And, I, and I'm, I'm just not willing to go there yet. But maybe in time, we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, I'm more than happy to chat. And I'm also on Instagram a lot. Um, I do have a Twitter account and I'm using it less and less and less and less and less, like a lot of people, I think. Twitter seems to have gone completely off on a tangent, but Twitter seems to have gone into a, I don't know, I don't know about you, not keen on it particularly. Anyway, let's not, let's not go about there. So it's Friday morning. I've got an enormous cup of tea. It's that time of day where a cup of tea is needed. So... Um, without further ado, let me show you some of the things that I have been working on and finishing. I ha Do you know, I thought I'd finished a lot more than I had. So I can't remember when my last one was, probably a good three to four weeks ago video. And I thought I had finished a lot more than I had. But I have been doing a lot of stuff. I just haven't been finishing stuff. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, so um, you'll know that Alan the alpaca... He's no longer here. He's gone. He's gone to another home already. That's the problem when you make things. Things go. That's very sad to see Alan go, but he's gone to one of my closest chums, one of my soul sisters. Hello, lovely now. Um, I shall be thinking of you. Um, and so we, we, but we still have this lovely sheep, which I got for Christmas, and somebody suggested Cyril, and I think that's a very good name. So this is now Cyril. Cyril the sheep. So Cyril's here and he's looking after me. So without further ado, let me show you my first sewing masterpiece that I have finished. And it is this glorious thing. So this is a spousal sock. <laughs> I do like that. Um, I can't remember who says it, who's the person that originated that, but it's a sock for my husband. I don't wear woolen socks, actually. I love knitting them, but I don't wear them um, because I have hypohydrosis, which, and the, the wool actually sets off my hypohydrosis. Um, I have it in my hands and my feet, um, particularly bad in my feet. Um, but all that, although as I've got older, it's got better. But anyway, socks, I have found set them off. Um, 
but my husband absolutely loves his hand knit socks and he wanted he wants more he wants all the hand knit socks i think so there we go this is um reef dive by stranded dye works uh 72 stitch on a 2.25 so normally i do 2.5 millimeter needles for him dpns but i did this on 2.25 to see whether i prefer it and i do i must admit i prefer the wool that i'm getting and this is her fjord base now i am cracking on with the second sock which i have here in my debbie bliss bag and look if you're a Harry Potter fan, which I am a huge Harry Potter fan, um, then you will know that this is the diadem. I've got a diadem pin. I know. Um, and I actually wanted to wear it because I do wear brooches, but it's too big. It's too big and it pulls down too much. Oh, just lost one of my needles. So it is Stranded Dye Works, Fjord Base which is 80-20 beer felt nylon thing room weight and this is how far I'm doing how far I've got so I do top down um da -da! so I'm on the heel flap and gusset which is what I normally do so I am starting the heel flap and of course it been men it goes on forever um I'm probably I need to check how many I've done I reckon I'm I'm about halfway um I'm just doing a standard and I'm not doing reinforced quite often I do reinforced heels but this feels sturdy enough I'm trying it without reinforcement but yes this is I didn't do the best heel flap and gusset with this one it hasn't been blocked or anything but it's knitted up beautifully. And whenever I produce it, people goo at the colour. And I, it is just amazing. It's not really picking up all the little flecks of um, pink that are in it and sea green. Oh, it's just glorious. It is literally like diving into a reef. So there we go. So that's my first finished masterpiece. He keeps asking me, how far are you getting? How far have you, how far have you got? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. But then my going out socks. Am I going out knitting? Um, so, and I can't, I kind of think I just need to get the, the heel sorted to, to a place where I can actually take it back out again. So maybe I need to crack on and just go do the heel and then I can start taking them out again. And then they go really quick. So anyway, so there we go. That's my, my first one, my lovely sock. What's wrong holding it that way? It should be that way. But then it feels like it's going to kick me in the face. Ta da! In my bag. Let's put that down there. So that was number number one. Number two. I really feel like I should have done more. Now, I said I was waiting for some um, yarn and that it was due to come. And it did come. And I got two sets of yarn. Because, well, the first one is I wanted to knit some things from Knitting from the North, which is this lovely book, 30 Contemporary Hats, Gloves, Scarves and Jumpers by Hilary Grant. And it is all um, just amazing colour work. Look at that. Oh, and anyway, I actually went and I ordered the, the yarn that it suggests, that it comes in. So, and it is... Jameson Shetland Spindrift fingering weight. Now I had loads of DK, but I didn't have much fingering weight. And my word, it's a toothy one. I'm not sure I could wear. I'm wondering about where whether I could wear it as a, a cowl. Although I think once you've blocked it and it's had a bit of a wash and a wear, it becomes less. Um. I don't know. Oh, what's the word I want? To, I don't want to say aggressive. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I got four of these, which is white, as you can tell. Four of those. Four of these, which is another white, but it's more of a kind of a naturally white, isn't it? Kind of a natural feel. 
So I've got four of those. I got two of these, which I've shown you, which is called Verdir Verdrigus, Verdrigus, Verdri, I don't know how to pronounce that. And I got two of this one, which is called Bottle, which is not picking up, but it's actually a really, really, really deep green. Can I get it to show you the green? That's actually a better, there we are, that's better. That's better, it's not even picking it up, but it's much more of a green, it's a deep green, a uh, deep bottle green. And I got one of this, which is called Old Gold. And that's a perfect representation of it. So yes, yeah, so that's Old Gold. So, what did I make? Well, I made these. So there's two of them. You can wear them any way up. And they are arrow, they're the arrow cuffs. And you wear them to stop the draft getting down in your jumper. Or so you can wear it under your coat, or you could even wear it and do the same with your coat. Now, because I'm tall, I do tend to find that a lot of my um, sleeves ride up and I find it truly irritating. It's something that really gets to me. Some people are like, no, I like it to three quarter length sleeves or I like this, but I think because it's so much rarer for me to have a long sleeve, I always crave a long sleeve and I hate having drafts up my sleeve. <laughs> so, is there any way I can show these that I don't look completely daft? No, I don't think there is. I think I'm going to look completely stupid. We'll just accept it. Um, so I knitted these and I just thought I'd have a go at doing them. Now, you were supposed to do them, I, I think, magic loop or using a small circular, but I didn't. I used DPNs. Um, now, one of them's blocked and one of them's not blocked. Can you tell? I don't think you can particularly, maybe a little bit. So this is the one that's blocked and this is the one that's not blocked. My um, colour work, I haven't done colour work for ages, and this was my first time doing colour work again. And I've forgotten how much I enjoyed it, but I also, my tight, you know, how tight it was going to be. Um, my floats, go on, show us your floats. Not bad. Not bad. I am quite neat. The only thing was doing, I've never done. Uh, colour work on DPNs and it was trying to get it even. Actually you can tell that, that has been blocked by the floats, That's, that actually does show. Um, it's 2.25 on the ribbing and then 2.75 millimetres on the um, actual colour work and then back to 2.25 on the ribbing. Um, and so you can see how tight you do need the 2.75, otherwise it would be super tight. And I have worn them. We had a real cold patch the last couple of weeks when we have snow. And I did wear them a lot. And I really like them. And by heck, they really, they really are super warm. Um, I live just outside Cambridge. I haven't told you that, have I? I live just outside Cambridge in the east of England. And it, we have very mild weather. Um, so it was a real shock to us that we actually had quite a lot of snow. Oh, well, not quite a lot of snow. What am I talking about? We <laughs> had about an inch and a half. Um, and we were like, oh, oh, my word. And one day we had like two inches. And so we got up early and we went sledging. And then it all thawed. <laughs> so we were so glad that I actually went that day. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, and I wore them then because they are just very good at keeping your gloves even from moving and, and that kind of stuff. So they've been brilliant. So there we go. So those are my arrow cuffs. From made from um, Jameson Shetland's Spindrift, as recommended by the book. So I wanted, I shall go on to it. It's a, I know it's a masterpiece in progress, but I was so inspired, I thought I want to make a next, I want to make something else. I want to make something else now. Um, and I don't know why I haven't finished it, because I'm very close to finishing it. I am making this. Now, I'm doing this out of the bottle green. There we are. Can you see that that is a really, really lovely deep green? 
Da da da. Um, and so I do, and you're supposed to do these on deep ends. That's what the thumb is. You put waist yarn in, and then the thumb's going to go there. I don't think my tension's been as good. Let me show you a finished picture. And you're supposed to do them in a lighter green, and I did them in the darker green because I wanted to. So I'm crazy like that. So there we are. Barley, a fingerless mittens. And that, don't those look lovely and straight and blocked and what have you? Mine do not look like that. Um, let's be honest. But if we can imagine, I look like I've got a problem with my wrist. <laughs> uh, bah, 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 bah. There we go. It'll go like that. That's where my thumb is. So I'm actually on the final ribbing. I'm just I actually just need to get on with the ribbing. I don't know why I'm just I've been. I think it's kind of it's got warmer, so suddenly I'm not wanting to to wear mittens. Um, but my tension isn't so good. I here it's got a bit of a ridge, and I was trying so carefully, but I think I've pulled it. Whether or not when it it'll all relax in the blocking, um, I don't know. But it's looking really dark there, but it is actually a kind of a, a real strong bottle of green. I'm not sure I would do the dark and the white again. I think it might be too stark. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. The, the miracle of blocking will, will do it. But I'm, I really enjoy doing it. I found it very addictive doing the colour work. Colour work is just so lovely and fiddly. And I like fiddly. I'm do, using, I got a different set of needles for these. I ordered in some higher, higher sharps. And these are six inch. The other one. Uh, so these are six inch instead of using my other DPNs, which are I think eight, eight inches. I use these. Um, so again, two point two five and two point seven five, and I've really liked them. I do really like higher higher sharps. I'm just such a convert, um, and I've been keeping it in my my little bag, which I made myself. <laughs> which I'm very pleased with. And it has been perfect for keeping things in, in that. So there we go. So that's my a finished object and a work in progress. Um, working masterpiece, a finished masterpiece and a masterpiece in progress. So I'm, I'm very pleased with myself. So there we go. Cracking on. Doing lots of different things. I think that's what it is. I'm doing lots of different things. And I like that. But I don't like to have too many things on the needles at once. Otherwise, all oh, the hook at once. Because otherwise I, f I feel a pressure. Um, and like I can't concentrate on anything. Because I'm thinking, while well, I'm working on one thing. I'm thinking I should be working on another thing. So I really must just get that. F even if I just get that mitten finished. I will feel... I will feel easy. I mean, how long would it actually take me to finish the other mitten? I don't know. I just need to do it. So that's, I got that yarn in. Let me have a look. So other finished masterpiece. Oh, it's something I've been playing with for ages. Now, if you've watched my um, yarn chat videos for a while, you know that I make kind of... Um, gnomes or, or what I call shelf elves and I've made a lot of them and given them away um, and we have various ones in the house so they're the kind of the shelf elves that you pop pop up on the um, on a shelf and they stay there so they're not really kind of playing items now you know I like Harry Potter and I, I have lots of Harry Potter things uh, I read all the books the husband read, reads the books as well we're reading them with Benedict we have illustrated versions. We have all the other versions. So when they brought out the, um, they started reissuing Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in these colours, which are the house colours. And this is Ravenclaw, which is what I am. I'm kind of um, both Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. So I'm either one or the other, really. I've kind of been in both. So is it, I'm, a, I'm a raven huff. <laughs> the raven claw. No, raven. What is it? Raven puff, I would say. I'm a raven puff. Or a um, huffle claw. So, yeah. So I have got that book as well, you see. 
And just just because you know you you I, I have I did and um, slid the in as well. And also I have got the Gryffindor, but the Gryffindor's mm -hmm. actually in Benedict's room because that's he's a he's a Gryffindor, very definitely a Gryffindor. So anyway, I have all the books and I really love the colours and it talks about the colours in there and, and what have you. And so Ravenclaw is this amazing blue and then orange. Look at that. I told you there'd be no book stuff, but I can't help myself. So I got inspired and I made myself a little Ravenclaw one. And I have sat here all the, the parts to make a Hufflepuff and a Slytherin and a Gryffindor ones. And so I'm going to start making them and sending them to people. His nose isn't very good. I've got to do his nose better. His nose isn't, because this is just for me. Um, and I have done the legs not right, but they are the right colours. I should just pop him there. So they are the right colours. I've tried to match as much as I can the colours of the books um, and that they talk about. So yeah, so this is my little my little Ravenclaw shelf elf. So he's a little Ravenclaw elf. And so I'm going to so I'm gonna start making those. And I've got some lovely ideas to do for like moustaches and to get some little glasses as well. <laughs> and really start decorating them. And if I could make little wands, I would do. But then they do have their own magic. If you read the book, then the the elves do actually have their own magic. So yeah, so there so there's him, my little so he's a very silly little one. Let's pop him up there. He can sit up there and cast and cast his magic from up there. Oh, it doesn't, you can't really see him very well, but there we are. He's there. So yes, yeah, so that's, I've been working on those. I've been playing with those and thoroughly enjoying myself. And I've, I've been doing it for ages. And then I suddenly, I've, they're all, I've got all the parts here and I just need to put them together. Um, but it's putting them together that's just a bit fiddly and um, it's trying to get the nose right. I've been playing around with how to get the nose right. And I haven't quite done it on him, but I shall get there. I shall get the noses right. But there we go. There's my little my little my little Ravenclaw elf. Just thought I'd show you that. So what else? What else, lovely people? Uh, the other thing I was looking forward to receiving in the post, sorry, my tea's getting cold. I don't like it drinking when it's cold, so bear with. There we go. Let's pop that over there. Mm. So needy. Um, I wanted to make a new cardigan. So I have this cardigan. It's not that big on me it's quite a kind of a fitted cardigan it's just a one I bought I've had it for a couple of years and it's just a navy blue fairly long sleeve cardigan but it's quite fitted it's not one of the big ones so I have a big slouchy cardigan as well but sometimes you just you want to a cardigan but you don't want it to be enormous you just want it to be kind of the right length and what have you and I can never find them because I'm tall to get them to be the right length, I normally have to go up quite a lot of sizes. Um, and they just ne it just never works. So I just thought, look, I'll make myself one. But how to, to find a pattern for just such a basic cardigan with no embellishments. I don't want any embellishments. I just want a simple cardigan with a little button band that I can do to my own length. Um, I want to top down. I wanted to make it top down so that, excuse me. Um, I can judge the length and I don't want to make it right covering my bum length I want it more just to stop at my hips because it's that kind of cardigan that you just throw over just to give you a little bit of warmth um, and I, but I do like kind of decent sleeves and so I wanted to be able to try it on as I was making it so I thought I want to do top down and I don't I've never done that before so I've been keeping my eye out for patterns, but an awful lot of the patterns have embellishments and, and that kind of stuff. And I'm not a confident enough knitter to change a pattern. I'm, I'm, more, I'm a lot more confident at crochet and would be happy to change patterns in crochet. But in knitting, especially knitting garments, I'm just not confident enough. And I do think you need to have kind of an understanding about construction and how things fit together to be in order to change it. So you need to have made a couple and almost kind of 
learn by your mistakes as to what you like and what you don't like, what suits you and what doesn't suit you, and how you can alter things. And I'm just not confident enough to do that. It sounds like I'm excusing myself, but I'm not. So I've been keeping my eye out for a pattern. And then Mina Phillips, the knitting expat who you all watch, yes, she released her new cardigan, which if I can find it, I should put a, pi a picture up here. If I can't find it, there won't be a picture, <laughs> um, one way or the other. Um, but it, it is a mix and match cardigan. Now, the way she's done it, it's very long. And a lot of people have been doing them. I mean, it's a, a pattern that's, you know, so popular um, on Ravelry that I've seen lots of different versions of them. And a lot of people are doing them as big and bulky and kind of sloppy joe kind of cardigans. And I didn't want that. But looking at the pattern, I thought I can do as much or as little as I want. So I can do the length that I want. I don't have to do enormously long. I can just stop when I it's right for me. And the arms, I can just keep on going. Um, it's stocking net, so I don't all textured. So I'll just do the stocking net. And it sounded perfect. So I thought, what colour do I want to make myself some? So I was watching Crafts from the Third Floor. And she was talking about... She'd done a test knit for this and the yarn that she'd used, which she actually get something for her mum, was this, Similia, BC Garn, 100% organic wool, DK weight. So I was like, well, that's flipping perfect. So I had a look because I wanted to do, so it's this really deep purple. So I had a look at all the different colours and this on the internet looked lighter. It looked that colour, but it's come a lot darker. I was expecting it to be much more that kind of pinky purple. Um, so it's not completely true. I got it from Loop. Have I got the... So I got it from them, which is loopknitting.com because they're stockists um and it is i don't know i don't know where the wool comes from let's have a look does it tell me denmark so it's a danish a danish brand commercial brand um so th that's the only thing i would say is that on or while on my screen this came up uh, much more that colour and I was a bit surprised when I came and it was this but it is still lovely and as you can see I do wear this colour and I didn't want a really vibrantly patterned one I just wanted a cardigan that I can throw over and this colour will actually go with a lot that I wear so I was like great so BC Garn Similia 100% similar, organic wool hurrah so I've started it now, I didn't go overboard on how many I ordered. I think I ordered nine, and probably I should have ordered maybe a little bit more. I probably should have ordered ten to be safe. But um, when Tracy from Crafts from the Third Floor was talking about it, who's Nora George Charms, was talking about it, she said it actually knitted up bigger and so she didn't need as much wool as she thought she did and I thought I don't want to buy lots and then not find out it's right so I did my gauge swatches look at me look at me doing my swatches um so I did two and you're supposed to use four millimeters but I'm obviously a bit more of a tighter knitter than I thought so when I did it and blocked it, I found I needed to get gauge. I needed to be 4.5. So I'm doing 4.5. I'm using higher, higher sharps interchangeables for my set. Um, and there we go. So, and it's lovely and it is quite drapey and it's not too thick. It's lovely and soft. It will be gorgeous to wear. It'll be warm. It'll be warmer than this, which is more fingering weight. Um, but I think it'll be really nice and it'll be that kind of cardigan I can just throw on. So let me show you, I'll just move those there. Let me show you how far I've got. Now this is going to be a bit, look a bit of a mess to show you, but believe me, I'm doing rather well. <laughs> Jesus, tooting my own trumpet there. But then again, 
if you don't toot your own, if you don't take care of yourself, can't rely on others, can you? There's lots of stuff in the paper about that, hasn't there? Taking care of yourself. That's a different kind of story. Let's not talk about that. Okay, so I've got it back to one. Here we go. So I've done quite well. So I've knitted... This is when it's going to get awkward. I've knitted... Halfway. It's like a Bolero cardigan at the moment, which I will never wear. Let me tell you right now. People that can wear a Bolero, I salute you. I am not one. Lordy, I am not one. There are some people, aren't there, that can wear that kind of thing. Not me. So what happened was, I was knitting away, knit, 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 thoroughly enjoying myself. It's, I mean, it's just a big bit of stocking net, really, isn't it? It's just you're thinking, well, what am I trying to see, love? Nothing. Anyway, it's a big bit of stocking net. So I, it's a raglan. Raglan decreases, then you split for the sleeves, and then you go down and down and down. Um, and you're doing backwards and forwards because you're doing it flat, because you're not sticking it. So it's a big, a big piece of stocking net, which I'm absolutely fine by. But doing all of that purling, all the knitting and then all the purling, and then all the knitting and all the purling, I started to get pain in my knuckle in this finger. Peter Pointer. You can tell I've got a nine-year-old. Peter Pointer started to ache and it wasn't but it's not a, I haven't got arthritis in my hands or anything like that I do occasionally get rheumatism in that joint but that's from doing a lot of crafting in particular hand sewing ha that hurts um which is why I changed crafts because I was starting to get quite bad rheumatism in that wow. hand excuse me that's just somebody sending a message um so, but it was because I've not done any massive amount of purling for ages. I've done lots of knitting, lots of garter stitch, but I haven't been doing purling. And it makes such a difference because then it's a, it's a different movement. Now, I uh, knit English style and I throw. So that knuckle suddenly was doing an awful lot of work. Um, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll switch. I'll, I know what I'll do. Once I'll switch and I'll start, I'll do a sleeve. It's quite pretty, doesn't it? So there's my sleeve decreases. Can I show you this? My sleeve decreases. So, which of course I'm doing on deep ends because I don't magic loop. I still haven't been brave and tried magic loop yet. So I do it on deep ends. Higher, higher sharps again. Obsessed. Yes. Obsessed much? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, and so I'm doing the sleeves. So I picked up stitches, picked up stitches as needed, gave myself a bit of a hole, I've already tidied that, because I can't knit if it's if it's looking a mess, no, so I went back and knit, so there we go, had a bit of an issue with this, all looking gorgeous, it's commercial yarn, so I wasn't thinking of alternate, you know, doing alternate skeins or any of that, because it's commercial yarn, that's one of the benefits of commercial yarn, isn't it, isn't it people, yes, yes, say yes Louise, so I started doing the sleeve using this ball, and you won't be able to tell, but in real life, it is just a little different. Same dye lot, everything, but it's got almost got a higher twist. <gasps> so I got down, so, oh, here we go. I got to about here, where that was, and I suddenly thought, I've got a line right there. I've got a line. And I thought, oh, well, it's just me. It's just me noticing it. But every time I went towards picking it up, I was like, there's a line. I can see it. I can see that. You won't, you can't see it now. But I had a little line there. <gasps> and I was like, I can't live with that. I know it would put me off. Now, some people would be absolutely fine and say, I can't notice it or it will come out in the wash or it's fine. But if I put all this effort in, and there's, I know in my heart of hearts, I just wouldn't live with it. I wouldn't wear it. I either wouldn't finish the project, or I wouldn't wear it. And I thought, I can't do that. So I took it all out. Oh, I ripped it back. That was fun. It wasn't fun at all. Pulled out, took off this ball of yarn. 
had a bit of a panic about all my other balls, but they all seem to be the right colour, and then have knitted, and it's absolutely fine. So I've got this ball of yarn that is a slightly, slightly different shade. That's not annoying in any way, shape or form, and I was already close with my yarn. <sighs> so, thunk die. I don't really want to order any more because I now am not confident that it's going to come the same. Yeah, are you with me? So what to do? What to do? So my thinking is, I'm going to finish this sleeve. I am probably going to knit the other sleeve as well. So I will have done both sleeves before I've done the majority of the body. <laughs> Which is on a... Um, I put it on a on a thread and I've got the yarn here. <laughs> Which is why I can't show it off. Oh look at that, you can really see the colour there. There we go. That's a really good example of the colour. Let me show you the right side so you're not looking at all my pearl or all my pearling. Although it's mighty fine pearling. There you go. It's just a whole lot of stock in it, isn't it really? <laughs> um so then I shall so I'm going to knit this sleeve, I'm going to knit the other sleeve down to the ribbing. I'm not going to do the ribbing. Knit the sleeve do all the de decreases until I want to start the ribbing. Go on to the other sleeve, knit the sleeve, all the way down until I want to start the ribbing. Put it on waist yarn. Then go back and knit the body as long as I want it. And then this band is going to be my ribbing. So it's going to have a slight colour change. And whether anybody will notice it or whether it will just be me, this is going to be that. So it's going to be my ribbing and my button band. Am I ribbing on my... What do we think? Genius? Yes. Yes. Say yes now. <laughs> Say yes, it's genius. So that's what, that's how I'm going to use that ball. So that... that um, Yes, that ball. So that's how I'm going to use that. So that's... that's so I'm putting that away. Um, I've got two other balls. So one of them will be a sleeve. And I've got another one going. So I should have enough. Cross fingers. If not, the the wool that I will order in, um, I will order in before I do the ribbing and the ball band so that I can work out which colour it is, if it's exactly the same or whatever. So that's, that's the way I'm doing it. Yeah? Does that make sense? If it doesn't, not a lot I could do about that. But that's that's what I'm doing. Um, I am actually keeping it at the moment in my So Sweet Violet bag. But it's getting to the stage where it's getting a little bit, a little bit like it needs. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not going to lose any of my stitches. Um, it needs a slightly bigger bag. So I'm actually going to make myself a drawstring bag. So that's something I'm going to do this weekend. So the body I'm using higher high sharps. Drumsticks. Here you are, a bit of drum solo. <laughs> um, that was always really boring, wasn't it? Am I the only one that found those boring? Um, high high sharps, 4.5. That's US 7. There we go. I never say that. Um, which I love. They're just... I really like the sharpness of them. And then I'm using 4.5 US 7 um, DPMs for the sleeves and everybody talks about sleeve island well i find it really nice <laughs> i have i just utterly enjoyable it's just a bit of just a bit of knitting that's all you're doing just doing the knit stitch oh wow that actually is quite sharp um just poking along with my knit stitch all good so i need to get a bigger bag so i shall do that this weekend i think i shall make myself another a bigger bag a sweater bag um is that all I'm working on at the moment? So I'm working on a sock. I've got to finish the sock. I've got to finish the mitten. Cardigan, I'm really wanting to get through. And I'm getting to the stage now. I want it done in the next two weeks, really. Because then I can do other things. Because I have got... This moves on to something else. I've got quite a lot of um, knits that I want to do for other people. I haven't done any gift knits for ages. And I want to do a couple. I want to, I've got two friends who are um, with child. Um, one of them, I think it's the end of this month, end of March, 
beginning of April, but she normally comes early. She's on her fourth. And she's tiny and she's got the cutest bump. And I'm like looking at her thinking, God, but I was a whale by the time you, you are, and you're in your fourth. Um, she's oh, so lovely. So, and she knows it's a girl. So I want to make her something. And last time I made her, a, uh, for her little boy, I made a toy. So I thought I'd do a baby blanket this time. And then the other friend, they're late April. I saw her this week. Very tidy bump again. But then it's her first. Can be a lot more tidy with your first. And she, um, so I think she's late April, beginning of May first you don't know do you so um i need to make her something so i want to get the other stuff out of the way so i can make her something yes i do and i picked up the latest simply crochet because i want to make him i love monsters i look at that monster so i, I want to make him in the next couple of months as well because he's just a cute spy and then i saw in here and i can't find it now this very nice baby blanket. And I thought, ooh, I'll have a go with that. I've got, here we are. It's called Happy Bunnies. And I thought that's a very nice baby blanket. It's also a little bit of colour work. Um, so I swatched for it yesterday. I know, are you impressed? I'm actually swatching for a baby blanket. That never happens. And it's because I'm using a different yarn, and which I'm going to have to just get because I put it away. Dun, 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 dun. As I was putting it away, I thought, don't put it away because you're going to need to get that out. And then I'll just put it away. Um, I've got, sorry, just hit you there. That's uh, not very good. Um, I have got six balls of this, which is Serdar Snuggly Four Ply, which um, was my mum's because when she was doing baby blankets, because I wouldn't, this isn't kind of yarn that I would particularly pick up but she really liked it so I thought well I'll have a go with it and because it needed other colours I've now closed the page why did I do that because you need other colours pinks and purples and what have you I thought well I'll just pop to a yarn shop tomorrow uh, yesterday and they didn't have, amazingly, they didn't have any of this. Because I thought you could get this everywhere, but they didn't have any of this. What they had, the four ply they had, was special um, by St uh, Stylecraft, which I have all their DK range. But I've, I've never used their four ply range. So she's, I said to her, is it any, is it similar to Serdar? And she said, yeah, 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 well, it's four ply, isn't it? So this is a lot more... I don't know, this is made up, blah, 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 blah. I think this is acrylic and nylon, she says, trying to find what it's made up with. I was reading it. I know it's on here somewhere. Yes, 55% nylon, 45% acrylic. I wouldn't buy it. It's not really my kind of thing. Um, whereas this is 100% acrylic. And I prefer the feel of this on my fingers to this. This does feel a bit... Well, you wouldn't want it close near an open flame, let me tell you that. You wouldn't want an outfit in it. But it's fine for babies because it is super soft and it is super washable as well, which, I mean, it's hard, half of it, isn't it? You don't do baby stuff that's going to be hand wash because well, that's just a pain. You want something that you can throw in a washing machine. Um, so I thought, well, I'll try them together to see whether they work together. So I'll just buy one ball. I won't go ahead and buy the lot. And I really like this colour. It's Aspen. It's more greeny blue than it's showing up there. So I thought I'd have a go with this. As I say, it's more greeny blue. This looks really, really blue there, but it's more greeny blue. Um, and I had to see whether they work. So I did a little swatch and I was trying to make the, the bunny. Um, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. And doing colour work for a baby blanket, well, I was going to have to carry some floats. And I just thought, oh, that's the last thing I want to do because they're going to get their little fingers caught up in it. Or it's going to just be something that you put on the floor. But you somehow it was all, it just wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for me. And I, whether or not, I don't know. And this was not fun to, knit, to crochet with. It was a bit splitty. Knitting, it may be better. My mum used to do masses of crochet with this, but I was finding it hard. I was using a three millimetre uh, hook and whether that was the issue. But it does say 
three or three and a half. So it's three and a half on this and three on this. Ready, ready for action. Um, so I'm going to put this back, I think. I'm wondering whether it's just not my my wall to knit with, you know? We all have our we all have our, our favourites and our, so I'm wondering whether it's not mine to knit with. And now I've got this ball that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Don't know what I'm gonna do with. Could be a toy. Let's put you there. Put you there next to Cyril. Um so it could well be a toy that so that's going to be that's what I'm I'm thinking. So that's what I so thinking ahead, I've got two two things I want to make. I want to make a blanket and probably a toy, or maybe two blankets. Maybe two blankets. So I'll have a C. I've got a really nice jumper in here called a Seafarer. Crochet jumper. Suddenly I've gone all interested. I think that looks rather nice. Very plain, but because it's crochet, it's got a bit more of a, a texture. Texture. Yeah. So I think I might I might might even think about giving that a go. I think that looks rather nice and rather wearable. And of course, you can alter it. I'd be much more confident to alter it. Now, the actual, the, what they recommend for that um, is this, which I think, is it new? It's called Bo Peep by West Yorkshire Spinners. So I'm going to go into Cambridge tomorrow. So whether or not I'll have it. Yes, it is new. So that's for baby stuff. So maybe I'll have a look to see how expensive that is and maybe get myself a couple of balls of that. I could just do plain granny 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 um, striped. Oh, I completely lost my words. <laughs> uh, plain granny stripes for the baby blankets and then a plique something up, which I've done in the past. You don't need to know. I, that, that'll be later. Anyway, I'm whiffling on. No, really? What else have I been working on? This is the last thing I've been working on. I've been working on this in the last week and thoroughly I've gone straight back into it and really enjoyed it. And it is my Woodland Cow, which is finished. I haven't finished, but it, the cow's finished. So here we are. I was there last time on that copper and I've done all of those. So I've done a further 10 rows. Um, I'm just going to show you it. Bye bye. There we are. Back again. So here we are. So we're going. It was a bit lighter and we've got a bit earthy. We're going to go lighter again, I think. So you can see we've got, it's got quite earthy there, hasn't it? So it's lovely. So it continues with this pat, this palette of colours for quite some while before we get into the, the skies and what have you. So we're at kind of a decent wrap stage. That's what it looks like on. Obviously I'm not going to wear it, but give you an idea. And I haven't, I haven't sewn in my ends for the last 10 rows because I'm bad, but I actually don't mind sewing my ends in. I find it very enjoyable just sitting there. I prefer to sew them as a kind of a good 10 to 20 in one go. I'm probably at that stage actually, I need to sew in it. Um, and I have my little progress keeper, which keeps me, that tells me where I was last time I showed you. That's all that's on there. Grocery, jewelry, that's all that is. So that's what I'm doing with that. I've got my big box of wool down here that I have to spend the entire time trying to get the cat not to sit in it because the cat, as soon as I get it out, the cat goes, oh, lovely, and the peers and goes and sits in it and then gets annoyed with me when I don't let her, when I, ha when I move her. Um, the other, other two things I have to show you are new. I haven't done a lot of wool buying. So I bought that yesterday because I wanted to try it. That was three pounds. Um, Sign up, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy now. Um, I bought the wool for my cardigan, which I'm already using. I bought the wool for my arrow cuffs. So that's gonna, though both of those, so the wool for my cardigan's gonna be gone soon because I'm gonna be using that. This is gonna sit in my um, stash ready for color work of some kind. So I've got enough for either a cowl or a hat as well, or a cowl and a hat. So I think that's gonna come. I imagine that will be later in the year when it gets a bit cooler. Um, so that, so that's the wall that came in for that I've already started using. Um, and then I got completely, as I said, I was watching Crafts from the Third Floor, which is by Tracy, who is the dyer from Nora George. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? You can see what's going to happen. Yeah. 
So it was her, um, Mrs. Weasley's Mystery Club. Is that what it's called? Mrs. Weasley's Mystery Club? I think so. Um, and it was, the release was called The Quibbler. So I just, you know, I'm such a Harry Potter fan with all my shelf elves and books and, and, and things like that. So I thought I just got to have a go. And so it came. Oh, I hope that's not a spoiler. I don't think it is. It came came like two weeks. That's really blowing out. That says Nora George. Can I get it to say Nora? There we are. I can do that. It says Nora George arms. And here it is. So it comes with a little... It's just like that. A little ring on it. I'm not sure what that ring's there for. But it comes like that. Um, and it is this. So the colours are... It's a cream base with these pinks and little bits of purple and then this amazing black which is obviously for the newsprint so it is a sock set it is a, her super sock mrs weasley's knit club february 2018 there we are the quibbler and it's her super sock set it's a 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon the this is 100 grams 425 meters and this is 20 grams or 85 meters and so here it is now when it first came i wasn't i mean i love it the feel of it and it is just that is gorgeous but i wasn't overwhelmed by it and i think it's because i'm not a huge speckly fan and I wouldn't, it isn't one I'd pick up. And I think that made me realise that these mystery clubs and mystery skeins and stuff are not for me because I can be quite pernickety about what I like and what I don't like. Yeah, I'm just undoing it so that you can see. Oh, look, so you can see the, the pinks. And, ah. There we go quite neon aren't they the flashes so i'm i you know that's the thing i'm not oh, i'm gonna regret doing this now aren't i um i'm i'm not hugely into speckles some people are really into their speckles and stuff like that aren't they yeah i've done that very badly you just have to live with me on that one um there we are And there is a lot of the indie dyes are speckly. Oh, that's a nice colour. But since I've I've had it here and I've been looking at it, I've actually thought, I've actually started to really like it. My only thing is I'm not I don't wear cream. It doesn't suit me. It just doesn't suit my colouring. I always look like I need a bit of a wash. <laughs> I mean maybe it's because I need a little bit of a wash. But it cream doesn't really suit me so other people i could wear it as a cowl or i could have a hat it doesn't really suit me um so i'm not sure what this is going to go for what i'm going to use this for i really love the fact it comes with black and that really makes a difference so i'm a bit of a bit of a, in a bit of a quandary about that really but it did make me wonder whether mystery clubs are not for me in fact i think i've decided mystery clubs are not for me because of that because um i'm not into kind of a lot of the speckles i love them i like seeing them uh, you know when i look at them and I, I look at other people's i think oh yes i know i can completely see why you find that as beautiful as you do it's not something i want to knit with or or wear um so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. It feels beautiful. The wool is glorious. I kind of wish it was my colouring, really, because I would like to knit with it. So at some point, somebody's going to get something made out of this, I think. Lucky them. That's all I can say. And then the last thing, which is totally me, um, is from So Sweet Violet. And I saw this and I just thought, yes, yes, I need... I need a little progress creeper of hearts, of stars. I need that. It's just a little, look at that. Is that not just glorious? You just want that on your work, really. So that I'm going to put that on my cardigan as a little jazzy. You can get all different ones. You can get, you know, just certain colours of stars. 
but they're like a little a little disco ball of stars I just thought I have to have it I have to have it from So Sweet Violet so there we go little jewellery that was it really I only got that the last couple of days and I was having a bad day and some posts came and it was like hooray and it really lightened my day hurrah hurrah says I and that's it that's all I've got to show you really well all I've got to show you I've done quite well I've done quite I you know I would have sworn isn't that funny I would have sworn I mean not that I swear a lot uh, I, that I had a lot more to show you that I'd finished kept finishing things have I finished stuff and given it away I don't think so not that generous <laughs> um anyway I've got some stuff to finish, haven't I? So hopefully the next time, I won't be coming back until I finish my cardigan. Or at least I am nearly finished my cardigan. And I've done the other sock. I need to do that. Those are the two things I need to do. Oh, and my um, my um, mitt. <gasps> Actually, when I think about it, I've got a lot. And there's so many other things that I want to um, get cracking on. So, for example, I've got those two baby blankets. I want to do that monster. I'm desperate to do that monster. I've seen other people doing toys. And I thought, I want to do a toy. I want to make a monster. I need a monster in my life. Um, well, I'm going to need some more cotton for that. It's not DK. I need to do it in cotton. Um, so I want to make the monster. I also had come to a conclusion. Shall I tell you this now? Well, while we're here, what, have you got another couple of minutes? Yes. If you've stuck with me this long, God bless you for a start. <laughs> it was my, I came to an understanding with myself. Do you ever do that? Excuse me. I really wanted, I, I managed to get, put that down there. I managed to get, um, you will have seen this in the previous one, I managed to get a oracle kit from Full and Vine. No, I don't know how I managed to do it either. Because considering how much they sell out, like uber super quick, these three, which are just heavenly, heavenly, heavenly colours. saying I don't like speckles, but God, uh, this, and I think it's the base, this is a kind of like a, this is a Lady of the Lake, and it's the greenish aqua uh, that completely me and then this got this neon in is just amazing and then dead calm which is this green i think that's uh, that's completely my color oh just gorgeous for the oracle shawl and then i thought i'm never going to do a big pie shawl because i'm just not going to wear it and i don't want to make things i can't i'm not going to wear so I'm not going to make it. Maybe I'll do that. And I got the pattern for the half oracle. And I was like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. This I'm going to teach myself brioche. And I'm going to make myself the, the half oracle shawl. And I will feel a million dollars in it. That's what I thought. So I was like, and then I'll have some left over for something else. Um, because I don't think I don't think you need three skeins for that. I think that's for the the full oracle. By Full and Vine, sorry. You know this, Full and Vine Yarns, Yarngasm podcast, you know this. Um, so I was going to do, that's what I was thinking I would do. And then I thought about it. I thought, do I really, am I really going to do that? No. And I saw from the Corner of Craft, they're doing a, uh, she's doing a, Hannah from Corner of Craft, who I love, is doing a knit along for, it's called, it's not Shibui, it was, a shoe is it the shoe C? If I can find a picture, I'll put it here. And it's this kind of shrug, so it's like a shrug, but you've got the sleeves there, and then the rest of it's just kind of like. And I can totally see myself wearing that as a comfy, you know, in the summer when you're a bit chilly and you want to put it on, and it's all squishy and everything, and a lot of it's br brioche and garter. And I just thought I can totally see myself wearing it. You need three colours that go together well it is still brioche but it's a lot more of something that I'm going to wear so that's and, and I want to teach myself brioche like now really so that I can start this and I won't be able to do it with the knit along because I won't be quick enough having never done brioche before 
but I want to get it done and it's that kind of thing I want to get done for kind of like May June because it's for the cold evenings for when it gets a bit chilly or on a rainy a rainy June day it actually can be quite chilly um but I haven't got time and I keep saying to myself oh well I could just I could just have a little go at brioche for the next half an hour and I think no you've got all this other stuff that you should be working on so um yeah that's a bit frustrating but yeah so there we go I'm pleased with that I've shown you these before but I wanted to show you it again because I was talking about it and there we go and I've been going on for an hour now and I said 40 to 50 minutes and I've gone on too long and there we are but it's been so enjoyable not quite